It's the gang spitter. Y'all hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, man. Like you like to play them parlays. Like you like to go out to eat instead of cooking for your man. Like you like to buy a tail at the motel. Understand? They just released that duck video of him getting blowed down. And uh, if you on duck side, like his mama, uh, his GD partners, rappers and shit like that, yeah, you supposed to feel away. But coming on the internet, like how King Yellow did, like y'all ain't do that when King Von got his video got aired out. We seen that, and we seen the dead body with him cut open and uh, sold back up. We seen all that. King Bond got done dirty on the internet way more than Duck. Way more. We seen his shit ASAP. Years going down the line. Now we just seeing that. And the other side, they already gone. One half locked up, Bond gone. You understand? So, man, everybody, not everybody, but regular people, we get put on TV all the time. So if you got a name, it's gonna happen. Unless it ain't on tape, it's gonna happen. How y'all, I don't understand how can somebody like a King Yellow or Duck Mama or his GD partners, how can y'all get online and say, y'all bogus for putting that out when First 48 put dead bodies online every day in TV. You ain't gotta be on the internet. Your mama watch crime shows with dead bodies. People get blown down on YouTube. The cops, they got pages where they release their um their camera video footage of a suspect getting blown down or whatever, shootouts, whatever. Them getting hit. Don't nobody never complain to them. Don't nobody never stand in front of A and E complaining. Don't nobody never make videos cussing them out. They interview the mama, give you a platform. Explain why they what happened and why they got blown down. They interviewed the killer and he will still be talking crazy. They interviewed eight people, so they put everybody on blast on TV. But on the internet, people acting like shit different. Like, nah, like, this is what we like. We like seeing murder. We like seeing the real thing. Y'all gotta understand, if we like the music when the rapper's talking about it, that means we really gonna like it if you see it in real life. Yeah, it's sad when it happened to our favorite rapper, when it happened to our partner. Yeah, we don't like that, but we like, we want to see the real thing. That's what it is. You know, everybody like this shit in different forms. We like the rapper getting blown down, the street nigga, gang banger, drug dealer. We like that type of form, people who watch something like this. Your mom and them, they like to watch it in domestic violent form. They still showing a dead body, woman got beat to death or the woman put poison in the man food trying to get the insurance money. Some people like it in that form. Some people like it in a cop killing a suspect form. So they watch cops all day or they go to YouTube and watch the more uncensored version. You know what I'm saying? They hear the cuss words and they really see the shooting. Ain't no blurring out like that. They like it that way. Some people like it in a uh, movie form. You know what I'm saying? More action in it and shit like that. But they watching violence all day. But that's fake. But they still, you know what I'm saying? Some people like it in lifetime form. Relationship or however they do it on lifetime. It's just different shit, man. So on the internet, it's a different ball game. It's a problem. But this is what Kodak Black be talking about in them songs. This is what Lil Dirt and Chief Keef and Doug and Everybody they talk about it in their song. Your guy that dog can get in the car four or five deep or two cars, two or three deep a piece. Nigga pull up, hop out, spray the whole shit. That's what BG was saying on the song. Okay, we riding, we riding, we coming up out that plane with DK firing, firing. Yeah, we coming about that old with DK firing, firing. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what God was talking about when he said, slow the car down, roll the window down. Hanging out the car and I'ma let off every round. That's what we like. So if we don't like this shit, why is we paying 150 to go to the concert when they come? 200, paying a hundred dollars to park your car, fit it all, paying all this money for the outfits. We spending two, three grand, 500, 400, 300 on fits. To hear a nigga say kill, kill. He stepped on this one and that one and that one. So yeah. Of course, ain't nobody gonna admit it, but everybody who's watching it, they're saying how wrong it is. They like this shit because they wouldn't subscribe to it. It wouldn't come down your timeline. You wouldn't subscribe to, if you don't like violence, you wouldn't subscribe to uh, certain blogs and certain channels and certain things to see that 
these real Muslims and real Christians and real Jews, they don't that shit don't come down their timeline. They ain't seen it. You'll tell them about it. Who was Doug? Who was this one? Who was Trouble? School. Rest in peace, school. Who was Bankwell Fresh? They don't know these guys. Who was uh, uh, Mubu Crump? Yeah, who was Doe B? They don't know these guys. That shit don't come down their timeline. We subscribe to it. We like it. We like the real thing. Man, it's the real thing. Now, as far as the situation with Doug, now we're seeing how it played out. If you in his shoes, like, what you do? If you see death in front of your face, a car just pulled up. You ain't see the other one, but they right there. You understand? Like, what you do? Do you drop your head like he did? And get blow down right there? Or do you run back in the stove and make them come in that bitch and stretch you out? Maybe all of them will come in the stove. Maybe, yeah, they on some crash out shit, but they don't want to come in the stove because they could lock the doors. Motherfucker press the button, but if a motherfucker blasting like that, they ain't going to press the button. You understand? But going in the stove, you can hit more innocent people and all that stuff. So you nigga may not, maybe one or two, because Duck was a strong guy. He took a lot of bullets. Like, even when they, after they blowed him down, really, like, out of all of them, see murder and, um, see murder and see thing was the ones that really, you know, gave him the business. Like, Muwak was the one that really ran him down and chased him around the car, still fine. So Muwak was a real stepper. Like, I seen how he moved, like. He was the one at the end, right there by the car. And then the other nigga, uh, Zell, was behind Muwap. Then you had to see Murder behind the sign. He hit from right there. So when Duck, ducking down, it's really only see Murder and got down. See Thing. See Thing gave the business, like, stood over. Same thing with Muwap. So see Thing and Muwap, these are the type of steppers you'll want with your team. Like, them some good steppers right there. You know, uh, if we talking like being a stepper, you want a guy like Muwap on your team that he he don't give a fuck. Public, it don't matter. You drop the bread, I'm gonna go get the man. Like it don't matter. But that's bad in a lot of ways. Cause I need you on the street. A nigga like you don't give a fuck. They'll blow that bitch. You're gonna chase him down. I ain't worried about getting shot. You know what I'm saying? So you, a guy like Muwap, I'm just gonna slap him with a vest and make sure he, you know. Cause this nigga wanna blow back because he'll uh, chase you down. So you need two or three guys like him on your team. You got about four or five shooters like Muwap that'll chase you down. Or see thing, right? That'll chase you down. Zell, you know, Zell wasn't far away either. He was right there with him. But I could tip like they ain't really need all them. They didn't need all. All they needed was Muwap, really. Muwap would have made sure, like, without a gun, if Duck don't got no gun, Muwap, he'll get the job done. Muwap gonna keep shooting. You just give him a whole bunch of clips, he'll keep shooting till the job done. I'm not saying that was a good thing he did to Duck, because Duck didn't deserve that, but I can't say he don't deserve that. I don't know what type of shots Duck didn't call. If he did that, it's fair game. It's the street, so it don't matter if he deserved it or not. In the street, Satan say, if you want to crush a nigga, get by association, you can get crushed. This ain't, nah, we demons, so it's, it's fair game. I don't think it's no sad situation. It was just fucked up. You know, it happened that way, but Duck put himself in that position. God already blessed him. Satan already blessed Duck because Duck was hard-headed. So Duck can't be mad at Satan. He blessed you. He gave you enough fame, clout, money to move out. But you weren't a real demon. You weren't a real demon. You let your good heart, the righteous side of you, get the best of you. You're supposed to vengeance. You got about it there. You see Boosie? And Boosie just said, eight years in Atlanta. That's a smart demon right there. You got to know when to hold him and fold him. Know when you up. Know when you too important. Sometimes you ain't up on the kills. You're just too important to get killed. You understand? False nigga. You can't stay because uh, these people ain't right. You ain't got the car yet. You ain't got, you ain't got the hits yet. You ain't got the big deal yet. You ain't so no records yet. So if these people still messed up, you still messed up. You ain't no superstar. Nobody, no one. Nobody, no one. So you still have what you needed to go ahead and get up out of there and keep making these niggas mad. You had too much money to get, man. Doug had too much money to go get. But, you know, his good heart kept him right there in the war zone instead of going to Cali. Maybe dealing with a robbery or something, a chain snatching or something like that. Instead of going to Atlanta, Florida, you know, he could have ran into the issue in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Instead of going to the Carolinas, Charlotte, 
instead of instead of going to uh, uh um Texas, instead of going to Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, Houston, El Paso, who knows? Could get them a plug with the Migos down there. It's better than Chirac, more safer. You know what I'm saying? Because you gonna mind your business and stay out of the way. Arizona, Arizona, Nevada, out there with King Yellow. I'm pretty sure King Yellow told you. So Satan trying to give you signs and warnings. He telling his children to tell you, come on, come on. Like all the rappers that want to stay in their city, you could be a trapper. You ain't got to be no rapper. You want to stay in your ground. You don't want to move. You could be in a war. It don't matter. Your people ain't straight. You give yourself so many excuses. All right. You tell yourself you don't want to move to Vegas because you don't want to meet no new friends and you think of fate, you can't trust nobody and ain't nobody going to hold you down like your own people and all that stuff. And then you tell yourself your mama ain't got no crib, your grandma ain't got no crib, your sister and your brother ain't got no cars and crib, they still messed up. So you feel like you got to stay, like you, you put too much and you got your crew. So the money that come in, the money that was coming in for duck, you got the mind frame. No new friends. No new friends. Okay, you ain't, you ain't moving, so that's out of there. Okay, you standing your ground in Chicago, all right? And you in a war. And you the face of that war for that side, right? So the income that come in from shows, promos, features, drugs, hits, whatever, come, whatever income come in, scamming. A lot of times when we stand our ground, when we real street niggas and all that stuff, we putting our money in the wrong shit. So yeah, we buying guns, we buying drugs, we buying clothes, we going out to eat, we, yeah, we hitting these females, and we going on trips sometimes, and we spending all this money on the wrong shit instead of putting the money into the brand, meaning that big duck, meaning trouble, meaning bankroll fresh, meaning whatever rapper they got blow down. So that's buying security. If you don't want real security, then turn your partners. Make them go through the schools and the training and all that stuff. Let them get certified for real. If they really want to win, go to the next level and be on this ride. Duck, you had all this time. You was rapping in 2013, 20. You could have been, I ain't going to say 2012 and all that stuff, but in the early shot rap days, you was rapping. So you had plenty of time. Somebody that really love you, a couple of niggas, send them niggas through. They ain't got no criminal record. Let them get all their shit, security. Let them get their gun license and all that stuff. You're supposed to have somebody standing outside the store. Two guys, that's all you need. Two guys. You know, at least one guy standing in front of the store. The other guy, he got the bulletproof. He got the bulletproof. See, if you got a big Escalade, this is why it's important to my steppers, my trappers, if you got a bag, trade that scat pack in for an SUV. If you playing with 200,000, quarter million, 300,000, 100,000, 80 grand, 70 grand, trade that scat, them Hellcat, all that, get you a big SUV. If you got a lot of income coming in, man, it's really important to try to get that bitch bulletproof. Even if it's not, like, even if you only can get the windows, it's important. You ain't got to get the whole car bulletproof. Like, take baby steps. If your income ain't coming in like that, or you ain't got to like that, or you got to do everything by yourself. Yeah, so when you get ambushed like that, and it's a whole bunch of shooters, you got move up and, and you got see thing over here, move up over there. You got uh, see murder over there. You got uh, Zell over there. You run around the car, you know, it's going to be hard for them to shoot over a big-ass Escalade. You know what I'm saying? A big-ass Tahoe sitting up and shit like so they're gonna have to come around that car so that give you time you know if you got two guys or a man that's holding the door down making sure everything clear he got a rifle or he got whatever vest up they help you out so they gotta drop him which they had enough shooters how they came at you though it's like you had a security team how they came at you but you was one guy but I'm telling you how strong Duck was and all the bullets that he took and how long it took for him to pass away. Bro, something like this. That's all Duck needed. It's all Duck needed or something like this. You know what I'm saying? Something to protect his neck. You know what I'm saying? I hope that vest got a turtle neck. It do. You know, Duck got hit a lot in his chest, his stomach, his shoulders, his neck. He ain't really take a lot of face shots. So a vest like this and how strong his heart 
And his inside was, he would have survived. This part right here go by the neck, all oh, that's covered. But Duck not gonna wear that. Duck don't wanna feel bulky like me. I put this shit on. He don't wanna feel bulky. He wanna, you know, going shopping. I'd have been in South Park Mall. I got this shit recorded. I'd have been at Concord Mills, Carolina Mall. I go shop at Best On. Still on. Yeah, man's on everything. In the mall. <laughs> uh, lunchtime. But, uh, but he don't want to feel all that bulky shit. Nigga want to just put on a little sweatsuit and a little jacket or a white tee out of that. You know, a fitted hat. You know what I'm saying? Some pants or all white that whole one. And hit the door, you know what I'm saying? A little Rolex watch, plain Jane Moff. You know what I'm saying? That's it, maybe a little small chain, something. Man, the store run out, tied head back. Like, nigga chilling, like, nigga ain't want to feel like that. Booking and shit, like, but they could have saved his life. They could have saved his life. It's what? They would have hit his legs, tore his legs up. He maybe would have caught a couple in his shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Maybe the head, maybe. But who knows? So, something like that, an extra man and a gun. You can give four or five guys a fight. If you're a strong guy, they can take a couple of shells. But he didn't do it, though. He want to have that bragging right of, I don't never have security. Well, you need to move like Boosie do. You want security? You need to keep four or five, six guys around you at all times. When you go out to eat, you pay for that. Wherever y'all, you pay for that. They live with you, duck. It ain't no going home to the but You live with me. You live with me. You got a girl, she come over here. Y'all live over here. So when the money come in, I'm getting a big ass house. I need two or three niggas, so whatever hole, you hitting them here. You take care of your kids, you're doing it here. It ain't no going home. <laughs> we going to the next level together. Now, you can take breaks and switch out. That's why I'm gonna hire so many guys. Yeah, some of y'all can, you know what I'm saying? Some of y'all wanna go on dates. Y'all gotta go see our mom and all that dub, but it's always gonna be somebody at the house. It's always gonna be. But, oh, when I move around, Cause you know, that's why a nigga like Boosie, we talk that shit about him, but that's why he go young. He keep a 21, 22, nigga really ain't got no big family, nigga ain't really got, yeah, so they can be up under him. So you know how to move, you know how to, but rappers don't do that. They do it for the video, but on the everyday life tip, they don't want to be niggas around them. They don't want to spend the money. Money can be funny, low. We'll tell a nigga rock out with you. When the check comes, nigga, we up. Make sure I stay alive. Make sure I stay on the streets. And we're gonna go, I'm gonna make sure we go to the next level. Now, don't do nothing, nigga, fuck up the whole empire. They could tear down the brand like you doing a dumb ass move and they fall back on me. Conspiracy come, Rico come. Nah, go on my order. But do this, do this, and do this, and do this, and do that, and do this. And I'm gonna make sure I do this, and do that, and do that, and do this. And we're gonna go here. But yeah, that's what you bring to the table. And then when you find other shit that you can master and bring that to the table, you do that too. I ain't trying to keep you here as a soldier forever. Once we get on and the money really come in, now I'm a higher muffin, so I'm going to put an extra layer of security on top of y'all. So y'all do more of the fighting. They'll do more so of the fighting and the BB making. So if a nigga get through that layer, and then y'all protect me. And then I hold myself down. And plus, I'm rolling with y'all anyway. But you got to think like that. Sometimes you, you can't be all like what I'm saying all at one time. You take baby steps. But when you're a move militant, it's so easy. All they got to do is say, all they got to do really is get the call and they moving. They ain't got to worry about two or three securities or three or four steppers that be with them or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to be with a little female. You're going to be with one or two guys on a good day. You catch him on a good day, he lacking. You know what I'm saying? Even if he's strapped, but niggas ain't going, they going to keep doing what they do because it feel good to say, I don't move with security. It feel good to say, when a nigga shot at you and you ain't run or you stood your ground. And you survived it. It feel good. It feel good. So I ain't gonna keep doing it. Especially if he's young, he turned, got a name, got an image, all of that. He can go to jail, whatever, he get out, he right back in the hood. He'll lay low for a little bit, he right back to the same old shit, man. So it'll take you surviving shots or beating the death row case or something happening to somebody else and you wake up, you get older, then you got special niggas like I mean, smart niggas. I ain't gonna say special. Smart, like a King Yellow or a Chief Keith. And they just dip. They feel like they know when they won. They know, like, I'm still living. A lot of my partners dead or in jail. Man, I got the money to move. Even if I move and I go broke, nigga, I'm gonna figure this shit out. 
I made that jump. So you gotta salute a nigga like King Yellow, nigga like Chief Keith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got these niggas knew when they won. Chief Keith knew it early. King Yellow got a little later, but he got it. He got about it that ain't good. Being that black, you know what I'm saying? You know, some niggas pop in and out. Even Rico Records, some niggas pop in and out, and they take a big risk. And sometimes they can get lucky. They stay lucky for a long time, for all it takes is one time, but they don't just be there every day. If they do, they come in militant, they don't have their team, and yeah. Like how got it move? Move like you wanna live, like you got something to live for. How you saying you trying to help all your people and make sure they straight all the death, and you put yourself in a situation like that because you think niggas won't drop their nuts around this area. You think niggas is all good. You think you can't be spotted. You think Niggas don't really want to see you get up out of here like that. You think they got to catch you at JJ Fish. They got to catch you at where they caught uh, 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 Chino. They got to catch you at a Target. They got to catch you at White Castle. They got to catch you at McDonald's drive through They ain't got to catch you coming out the block, I mean, uh, 63rd. Nah, catch you coming out the white folk, the designer stores, even the baby store, buying it for kids. Catch you right there, stretch you. Catch you coming out of Ruth Chris, any top level, Louis though, it don't matter. Yeah, car dealership, yeah. It's really like that, we really want you out of here. We really wanna, you understand? But Doug had a big heart, a good heart. And yeah, that was his downfall, cause he wouldn't have been there. And then, not only the good heart kept him in that city, he still wanna go shopping instead of sending somebody. You could have sent old girl. You didn't have to go down there, but you didn't think a nigga would get down. I can't really fault you on that because you don't think a nigga would get low down and dirty with the 30-30. And I mean your neighborhood with my nose dirty right there at the Gold Coast. Don't think a nigga going to drop his nuts. We always, you know, hey, when it comes to steppers and demons and shit like that, you know, a demon feels safe when he around white people and stuff. So he'll kind of turn his cars down. You understand? Sometimes, not all the demons, but yeah, a nigga kind of feel a little safer when he around white people. And, it's uppity and a lot of police and cameras everywhere, so nigga ain't gonna, nigga may still have that thing on him, you know what I'm saying? He had that thing on him, but he ain't really on team with everything like that, because he know these people around here don't mean him no harm, you know what I'm saying? He coming to spend a bag and all that duh. You know, real steppers and shit like that really don't be down there like that. Not like that all the time, regular day, you know what I'm saying? Just in and out, in and out, in and out, you know what I'm saying? But nigga got spotted, the watchers. The watches, you gotta watch them watches. The watches are real dangerous. Real dangerous, man. Like, yeah, that spotter, that watcher, he'll be at the spots that you think he ain't. You know what I'm saying? He may not have no bodies or a whole bunch of them, but what he bring to the table is so dangerous and deadly. Yeah, because like the real steppers, they'll be in the hood smoking and doing what they do, gambling and whatever. Just thugging. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that spotter, he may, you know, he be more into girls, so he'll keep a little girlfriend, or he may go shopping, he go to the mall, or he go to this spot and that spot, you know, cause he really ain't, his name ain't really tied in a lot of bullshit for us, like, he the one who crushed him. Sometimes, it depends on if his business that got out on the streets or not. Yeah, I gotta understand something, like, when y'all niggas being toured and say like a paper route, CMG, O-Block, and 63rd and all that duh. Yeah, I don't really gotta be the stepper or the hustler or the fighter. I could just be the watcher. That's what I bring to the table. I'm the watcher. So what I'm gonna do every day is I'm gonna come to malls and I'm gonna scan the parking lot. I'm looking for op cars. You understand? Like, I'm looking for niggas. I'm watching on Facebook, IG, what niggas drive, and I'm scoping for shit. I got trackers on me and all that type of shit, man. You know what I'm saying? You already said I got trackers on me. And I'm just looking at shit or oh, some shit that I could take. You understand? So bingo, we got action. I see a wide body scat pack. I see a wide body scat pack. This could be an op car. You understand? So we went to it with a nigga. And I feel like this is car. Hey, they did buy the car. You know what I'm saying? I put a track on that bitch. Hey, yeah. Or I let niggas know. I hit niggas on the phone. Like so and so, so and so in here. That's how, what's called it? The bleeder dude got killed. Coming out the mall, and you spot your car, nigga. We know what car you driving, you trap. You a trapper, so yeah. You don't know that you serving a nigga. You serving a hoe that we know, and she know what type of car you drive. You understand that? Then I scan the other parking lot. 
You don't know that. You don't know the nigga you serving. He fuck with her. That's my cousin. You ain't even know that, though. We ain't never post. He don't like my pictures or nothing. And I know the car you drive. You understand that? <laughs> so, yeah, I just scan parking lots and shit, man. That's what I bring to the table. And I'm going to be good at my job. You understand? And I blow some down, too, though. But that really ain't my job, though. My job is to spot shit and call shit. You understand? Lay on shit. Yeah. And I get a lot of respect for that. Because I got a lot of niggas whack behind that. You understand? Like, so you got to be careful of them watchers, them spotters. That's a dangerous man, that spotter. Because he everywhere. He everywhere. When the other side, or you going against crews and y'all stepping, I need to focus on the one. It could be a female. That, yeah, because of him, he got knocked down. That because of him, get him about the way. He got to go. The one Because of him. If it wasn't for him, them the dangerous niggas right there. If it wasn't for him, they wouldn't have done that. Because of her, because of him. Yeah, he was coming out of her house. He was coming, yeah, them the ones gotta get, you know. Because, like, uh, what they bring to the table too dangerous and deadly, and, you know, they real slick with it. You know, real slick with it. Like, they feel like they gonna get away with shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Gotta be real evil though. They still, even though they don't got no bodies, they still they body though. They still can claim, you know, he ain't pull the trigger. He still can be like, yeah, it was because of me. If I make a phone call and say, well, this person that, and then y'all come do it, it's because of me. I get a piece of that body. I get to say it. That's my body. Now we really break it down in detail. Nah, I ain't pull the trigger, but that's my body though. It ain't no different from if a nigga put a bag on the nigga head. And they go handle that there. It's because of you the situation happened. If I made the phone call, it's because of me. So if I don't get nobody credit, then take Boosie credit away. Take a lot of these niggas credit away. You understand? Now, if I'm wrong, y'all drop the comments. And if I'm wrong, but she is. So, you know, niggas like them, they feel like they don't get away with shit. They feel like they slick. They ain't, you know, they be feeling they self. A lot of these niggas are watchers and shit. They be broke. So they be in their feelings a lot. So if you fuck they hoe, or if you do something to them, or whatever, the nigga be in his feelings. So he really may want you up out of here more than they do. He may want you up out of here. He on it more than they is. They ain't even trying to, they ain't even looking for the like that. They catch him, they catch him, they stretch him, but they ain't just, you know what I'm saying? So he really, he really want to duck up out of here, whoever made that call. Yeah. But other than that, like, Duck was in a lose-lose situation. Can you say that? Some people say that. But is you the type, like I say, to stand your ground? Or would you run back in the building, make them come in there, and stretch in there? Now, I'm saying this before they let off a shot. You know, but timing be everything. Maybe Duck ain't see. You know, a lot of niggas, when they shopping, they don't just look outside and see if they see something funny or fishy. The girl, she ain't call them and say, it's niggas riding up and down. You may want to stay in there. You understand? Like, you may want to stay in there. Or give him time to call his people, and they come down there. If he would have seen something fishy, or she would have been on her P's and Q's just watching, but I don't know if she was really, because I ain't really just go look at all the trial shit. I don't know if she was in there with him or whatever, so she couldn't have done that. But she was already sitting in the car, but she could have just got to the car early. You know what I'm saying? Came to the car first, and then Duck coming out. She making sure, she probably looked around, made sure shit straight, but ain't see nothing out the ordinary. And yeah, he came on out, but as soon as he came out, he spotted the car. And knew like, damn, I gotta take all these fucking bullets. Damn, they got me. I ain't gonna run though. But you ain't got that much time to think cause they pulling up, they hopping right out. For him to take all them shells, for him like to have two guys stand over him, see thing right here, and then you got move out on the other side, giving him the business. And then when they run off, he's still moving around, fighting for his life. If Duck would have got fast medical attention, man, that man could have survived 10, 12, 15 shots, eight shots. You know what I'm saying? So he stayed on the ground a long time. So they ain't DOA him. They ain't DOA him. So damn. Now that I'm thinking, maybe uh, move up in them ain't the type of stuff that you want. 
fully. Like they heart and they running down shit. Yeah, but for like DOA and shit, they didn't do that. They didn't do that. When the police got there and everything, he still was moving around. Eyes open and everything. They want he wanna just lay it out. Other niggas step on shit, nigga be laid out, gone already. Ambulance get that nigga gone. So they ain't just keep pumping into him. Cause they still worry about police coming, most of looking, you know what I'm saying? Unmarked um, police, undercover, all type of shit. Even though they stood over them, they still was kind of rushing. Cause there's a lot of people. In the hood, they would probably would have kept, you know, dumping into his body. But right there, the pressure of everybody looking where they at, you know. But they still got it done real fast, real quick. So, you know that when they first hit, or the majority, like Moonwalk and all them, that when they first hit. Because they did it too fast, too. You know what I'm saying? But Doug was a strong guy, man. Like, this type of nigga that'll take five or ten shells, seven shells. You think, like, they put a bag on his head, you think he gone. You know for sure you shot him ten times. And this nigga still recovered. Still rapping and everything. He that type of nigga. Somebody else, he, the third shot would have deleted him. The duck, he had an urge to live. But the police, Chicago and them, they ain't want to live. Ain't no way. And if there would have been Eminem or Justin Timberlake or Taylor Swift, man, and they still moving, they still got life, man, we got airlifted out of there. Straight rushed to the hospital. They would have survived. But duck, they laid him, they wanted him to fight that shit like he can shake it off. They must have thought he was a machine or a terminator. That's what they thought. Like, he could just shake it off. Cause they, they left him there. Now, y'all did do some up close shooting, but y'all weren't really giving fatal shots. Because how he's still moving around for a long time. So, um, that was crazy right there, but. What y'all feel about this though? What y'all feel about the video getting released? Can you really be mad? Like, of course if you the mama, so I ain't talking to her, she can be mad, that's a baby. You know, of course if you right up under him type, you can be mad because it, it is what it is. But fine shit was out, everybody else shit was out. Everybody did by to get posted. They still show dead bodies on TV all day. So just keep that same energy with everything, not just with Doug and you know what I'm saying? Like, you get all the way around the board. Hate everything. You know? But it kind of look crazy when you say that and then you rap about the same thing that you don't want to see. But it is what it is, though. Y'all hit that like button, hit that comment section, hit that notification bell. You understand? Share the video like you share that pedal bag, like you share that needle, like you share a duck video of him getting that done to him. Yeah, share the video. Share the video like you shared King Bob when he got blown down. Share the video. Come.